you may be seated in his presence. Today we will continue where we stopped last Sunday by looking once again at the training in righteousness that God gave to Abraham. You will recall that we read Genesis chapter 15, verse number 6, which states, And Abraham believed God and was credited to him as righteousness. It was accounted to him, NIV, NLT, all of that. It was credited to him for righteousness. And those who live in the Western world, and maybe some of you here also, you know you can buy anything with your credit card. Anything. When I first got to America, you remember, I had only a debit card. So I was carrying cash, and Pastor Bank said, Ha, ah, Pastor B, one cash green B. So he got me my first American Express card that was joined to his own. But not to become a hooligan or a bad person who cannot be trusted. As soon as I would use the card, instantly, remember, cash is paid. And then I grew my wings, I got my own. I got platinum, I got gold card, I got all card. But all my life in the U.S., payment was made as an adwin due, not one day late. So it's okay to be credited, but you have to pay. Yeah. So when God credited Abraham with righteousness, he was put in his account there, but the drawdown will depend on training. So God began to train this idol worshiper. He was a former idol worshiper until the God of glory appeared to him, and then God credited him with righteousness, you're going, to, you're going to really bless God this day because you're going to find out that you are adopted as sons before the foundation of the world. Before, the, before your father met your mother. Are you listening to me? So to Abraham, God gave credit. And after that, training began. Now, I'm not going to limit today's teaching to Abraham alone. I'm going to go to a man called David. In our modern slang, I didn't read that in the Bible. You will call David a woman rapper. David was a woman's man. At the age of 30, he already had six wives. He would kill a man for his wife. And then he had several concubines. And yet, God gave the testimony. I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my will, a man after my heart, who we do, we're going to find out why God said so. Because God cannot lie. And then from there, we will step on to the training classrooms of the apostles of the Lamb. I'm preaching this message so that you don't write yourself off. We're going to look at least two of them. The foremost apostle to the Jews. By the name of Simon... Who became Peter? His father's name was not Peter. It was Simon by Jonas. But he was now given the name Peter 
And you will see how he got the name. Just as Abram was changed to Abraham, Simon was changed to Peter. I want you to find out why. And then we look at the former apostle <laughs> to the Gentiles. I asked a question yesterday in the inner caucus of our meeting. I said, be honest with me, tell me the truth. How many of you will hold vigils praying for the salvation of Saul, who became Paul? Who hunted down every Christian? He said, I was exceedingly mad against them. I wasted the church. I testified against them to blaspheme. You would have prayed to God that he should fall down and die. But you would have lost two-thirds of the Bible. The purpose of this message is to enable us to understand what it takes to win by righteousness. If you climb the 30 steps into the foyer, about to enter this sanctuary, you will see it written in gold. You can win by righteousness. What does it take to win? Beginning with Abraham, please turn your Bible with me to Genesis chapter 15, verse 1 to 6, and then we'll read Romans chapter 4, verse 13 to 25. Genesis 15, 1 to 6, reads, and I quote, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham. After so many things, all right? After Melchizedek had met him and given him ethical adjustments, after he had sworn to God and to the king of Sodom that he would not touch what belongs to him, lest he would give him opportunity to say, I made Abraham rich. After all these things, after he had won, won the world against Tida, king of nations and four other nations, and brought Lot, who deserted him back into his own fold. After these things... The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Your exceedingly great reward. I want you to put your name there for a moment. Say, I'm saying to you, do not be afraid. Mention your name. Because you are the seed of Abraham. It's here. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. It wasn't your skill that won you the world. It wasn't your armor bearer that protected you. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. And Abraham said, look, 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 let's, let's, let's talk serious. Uh, let, let, let's, I want us to mean business. Uh, let's talk. Lord God, what will you give me? I mean, God offered himself. I am your exceedingly... What will you give me seeing I go childless? And the hair of my house is a liaison of Damascus. Then Abraham said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my hair. Do you know what this means? God, are you really serious about this, your promise? You asked me to come out of my father's house, out of my nation, out of my family, unto a land that you promised me. And you said, you make me a great nation. How do you make a great nation there when there is no son? You have given me no heir. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Now, will you now judge Abraham, that he was wrong when Ishmael also came from his body. Mm. 
Okay. Do we have experts here? Connoisseurs of word. Would you say Abraham was wrong to have Ishmael? Thou knowest. I understand this is what ID infected the house with. Now, when I ask you questions, uh, the ID says, Thou knowest. He has a question. Give me verse 4. This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Now, the uninitiated will say, after all, Ishmael is also his seed. The Bible says so. So what exactly is wrong there? No, when God was talking body here, he was not talking of Abraham or Abram. He was talking, and one of you shall become one flesh. So he had to explain to this man who didn't fully understand that I'm talking about Sarai producing for you. Uh Do you understand me? They no longer are two. They are now one flesh. And he brought him outside and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. He couldn't count the stars. You remember I asked I.D. to count the number of bulbs and light in this ceiling? I.D., have you counted since then? If you don't tell me the number... Before the service is over today, you are not going home. So you are going to start from that corner. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. <laughs> huh? I'll go to the office and check the record. You'll go to the office and check the record. We need GBT. <laughs> Abraham couldn't count. Science will teach you that it takes four years for you to see the light of a star that has been shining for four years before it will get to the planet for you to see, and that each star is larger than the planet Earth. So how do you measure and count what is larger than the Earth? He couldn't. And then he believed in the Lord. You know what this means? I believe in you. And okay, you believe in me? Ma'am. I deposit righteousness in your account. So, how did they become the righteous Abraham? Romans chapter 4, 13 to 25. Training in righteousness. Romans 4, 13 to 25. Read with me verse 13. Ready? Read. For the promise that it will be, oh no, please. For the promise that it will be the heir of the word was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now, in all your reading, tell me the truth. Did God promise Abraham and his seed that they will be the heir of the law of the world? Let's read again. For the promise that it will be the heir of the world. Do you know what it means to be the heir of the world? If I say you'll be the heir of the world, you'll sing me a song. You want me to tell you what song? I'm funny, Kilo Go Jerry Bobo, are you? Go swear no. We are not asking you to swear me, no. The inheritance of the begotten are the nations of the earth. Ask of me the nations. But your inheritance is mansion and cars. Nations have been destroyed after nation. For the promise that he will be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Did God make a promise to Abraham that he will be the heir of the world? Yes, God did. We just read it in 
Romans 4, 13, but let's locate it in Genesis 17, 1 to 6. 13 years after God has not communicated with him, God showed up and said, Abraham, walk before me and be blameless. Obey me and live as you should. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations. If you stop here, you say, well, that's not all nations. You can read further. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. At first he said, I will make you a great nation. Then he's not saying nations will come out of you, out of your loins. I'll bring them out. But you will say many nations are not all the nations of the world. But he has, he has already promised that in you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. In woman. And I told you that has nothing to do with gold. It has nothing to do with silver. There's only one promise that will make that happen. Christ will become the curse for us. For curse, it is written, causes every man that hangs on the tree so that what will happen? So that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the nations. And what is that blessing? That we may receive the promise of the Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can make it happen for every person. So, Abraham was the heir of all nations. Let's continue to read Romans 4. Let's start from verse 13 again. We read up to verse 25. For the promise that he will be the heir of the word was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. Because the law brings about wrath, for where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to, I can't hear you. It's of faith that it may be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of Israel. I can't hear you. Who is the father of us all? As it is written, I've made you a father of many nations in the presence of him, whom he believed. Who believed? Abraham. Whom he believed? God, who gives life to the dead and called those things which do not exist as though they did. So if you say, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart who will do all my will, he had spoken it. David will eventually line up. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So, you should, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead. You know what that means? I told you before. Engine has knocked. Since he was about 100 years old. And the deadness from childhood of Sarah's womb. From when she was teenage, a teenager to when she got married. To when menopause came in. And I told you that menopause is not menostop. Because God revived it. He did not waver at this level. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. I hope you're following me as I'm reading. And being fully convinced or persuaded that what he, God, had promised, he was also able to perform. He's able, abundantly able, to deliver 
and to say he's able, abundantly able to deliver those who trust in him. And therefore, he was what? Accounted to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses. Hello. My Lord, I appear before you today to argue this case. I was charged with an offense and I'm standing before you. But somebody steps in and says, let him go. I'm responsible for that offense. And you can give me maximum punishment. And then you impose maximum punishment on me. And I'm taken away. Do you have a right to go after the man that I set free? That's why Barabbas went free. Jesus did not die instead of you. He died as you on the cross. He died as you. And it doesn't matter what Satan will rake up and try to lay any charge against the elect of God. Who can lay any charge against the elect of God? It is God who justifies. If God be for us, who can be against us? He is our advocate in heaven arguing our case and cases and he has lost none yet. Why do you allow others to condemn you? There is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ who are walking according to the spirit not according to the flesh because the spirit of I can't hear you the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin. And death. Give me that tissue box. Thank you. Hello. Here we go. Are you here? I'm going to throw this up with all my might. Are you ready? <laughs> Did I eat breakfast this morning? I can't remember. <laughs> what happened? Come on. Maybe my strength is not enough. Join me. Let's pull resources together. Join me. Let's pull resources together. Your strength and my strength. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he grabbed me like he's arresting me. <laughs> I asked him to come and help me. Eh? Moniko <laughs> and here we go. Say one, two, go. Ah, yes. What is happening here? What applied to this? What is the law called? Can gravity be violated? Yes, it can. It's called the law of thrust and lift. That's why, uh -huh. That's why a plane takes off. And until it decides to come down, as long as there's fuel, it will just be going there. And gravity can do all the pull. It will not come down. Why? Because a higher law has taken place. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has suspended grave, has suspended death, has suspended corruption, and underneath my... <laughs> Are the everlasting arms lifting me up that I will not fail, I will not fall, I will not falter as long as it's holding me. There's a higher law. In the cause of his training in righteousness, what did Abraham get? He was attending lecture after lecture. There was sight instruction when he would be taken out and be sure the scars, the stars in heaven. 
There'll be another time. He said, lift up your eyes. When Lot has left, east, west, north, and south. How can you see all that at the same time? You can stand here and see the whole landscape. East, west, north, and south. You can, but your eyes are lifted. That's why Moses can stand on the mount and he will see the land that belongs to every tribe. And it will be describing to them when you cross Jordan, you will see this, you will see that God opened his eyes. May your eyes be open to see and to know those things that are freely yours and given to you by God. Can I hear? Amen. Amen. All right. Abraham received three major attributes in the course of his training in righteousness. Remember when this series began? I told you that God made three promises to Abraham. You remember them? What's the first one? Land. I will give you a land. What's the second one? Descendants. What's the third one? Blessing. Not blessings. Blessing. And now here are three attributes he received in the course of his training from the text of scripture we just read. One is faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So God ensured that will not lose everything that was eased through unbelief. He strengthened his faith. Faith is four-dimensional. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith is a fruit of the Spirit. Faith is a gift of the Spirit. There's faith that comes by the word of God. And there's a spirit of faith. When all the four dynamics are in oppression in your life, your faith will not fail. God strengthened his faith. And it, just as Jesus told Peter, I have prayed that your faith will not fail. May your faith not fail. In the name of Jesus, may your faith not wane. It's too late for me to doubt God. Too late. If he would do nothing more for me on this planet, it's too late for me to doubt him. He's taken me by the hand. He showed me things. And then they come to pass. And others wonder, how did this come to pass? God told me, I believe it. That's all. Even if I don't believe it, it's why we not return to him void. Someone said, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Rubbish. God said it. That settles it. If you don't believe it, he will raise another person. Where are the gainsayers? Can I, can I ask them to get up this morning? Where are they? Because they start. We're going to build the citadel. Right? I say it's a faith project. Number two, it will not stop till it finishes. And number three, it will be dedicated, debt free. Doesn't that suggest to you that it will be dead before it will be free? If you are thinking, all we had was 500 million naira. We started, we spent over 14 billion. Shout it on the mountain top and take me to the police station. That I have enough strength and capacity to negotiate. And tell me what have you done with your own life? Before you become a cyber criminal, <laughs> fighting on social media, what you don't understand. You know, someone said, oh, when the bank spoke and when the bank wrote to rubbish what they had said, it was Pastor Bakari who bred the bank. <laughs> I have not left my house one time. I said before God, I'd never visited any of the banks. The last time I entered a banking hall in my life was 1985. It's not pride. If you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God and obey his commandment, these blessings, you shall run after them. They shall pursue you and overtake you. It's those who are looking for money who go to the bank. Those are money are looking for. The directors will come to us. Okay. I'm stopping there. You will soon find out. Because we own banks. You. Yes. 
The first attribute you received that it became strong is faith. And it was that faith that he used to obey God. Not willpower. My dear Pastor Remy, when I just got born again, they preached about fornication. I had strong willpower that in my life, until I marry, I will never touch a woman again. So I lifted my Bible. Yeah, but they preached about against fornication. Okay, I'm taking back my word uh, because even those who are preaching, it's okay. <laughs> so I got home and I took my Bible and I lifted it up and put it on my head. Father, if I ever go near a woman until I marry, let all the curses in this book be on my head. Isn't that demonstration of willpower? And for a long time, I was strong until I saw this babe. <laughs> and my hair began to turn. I tried to run. Something was pulling me back. I tried my best. I tried to run. Nobashubu yakata. Then my conscience now began to prick me. All the curses in the Bible, they are now yours. So I went to my pastor. I said, Baba, what is it for me? He said, what is it? I said, I put this Bible on my head that all the courses should be up. If I ever go near a woman, I said, have you gone near a woman? I said, no, turn, no, turn away from me. <laughs> so he opened to Galatians chapter 13. And I'm coming back with that next Sunday because we don't know what the curse of the law is. The Christ has become a curse for you. It's because you can't carry it. That's why he carried it. You can only walk by faith and trust God, not willpower. Do you understand me? Your willpower will fail you. If a man wills to do his will, he then will understand the doctrine. Are you ready for this message today? <laughs> you know, you can call me what you like. You were my administrator for how many years? Did I call you aside and say, your face is beautiful? You know, you say, weary. Yeah, well, bro, me, you me, ye. Uh-huh. Do you understand me? But truth be told, everybody will suspect you that you are doing something that they are doing. Not only did he receive the attribute of faith, In his training in righteousness, he also received patience. Patience. That when you are dealing with God, you need patience. Because he's not in a hurry. A thousand years is to him like one day. One day is like a thousand years. He has no boss to catch or a plane to catch. He's everywhere, all at the same time. He sees everything, but he's not looking for everybody. Who has this Bible? Pastor Ike, have you ever put your Bible on your head to swear before? Don't do it too. <laughs> Faith, next one is patience, and the last one is endurance. These are the three attributes that help Abraham to hope against hope while giving thanks to God regardless of the circumstances and the situation that he faced. He had faith. He developed patience. And God increased him to add endurance to his faith. Okay, let's look at it in the Bible. What did he use his faith to do? Hebrews 11, 8 to 10. 
Hebrews chapter 11, 8 to 10. By faith, Abraham obeyed. What are you using to obey God? Determination. Self will. That's why you make pledges you can't pay. And that's why I don't take pledges here. Do you understand me? I pledge to God and now don't give the sacrifice of fools. It's according to what a man has, not according to what he has not. Don't go and give your children school fees to impress the pastor. When they are sent back home, you'll be gnashing your teeth. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Are you as stupid as this? Hello? Are you as stupid as this 75-year-old man that followed God not knowing where he was going? Abraham, where are you going? I don't know. What are you doing? I don't know. Do you think he didn't know where he was going? Go and read chapter 11. He knew they were going to Canaan. What he didn't know was what was waiting for him there. He followed him. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city, which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. How did Abraham obey God? By faith. What are you using to obey God? Be honest with me. Facts. Faith built this building. Loans from banks came to dance to faith. We paid off the first bank. We paid off the second bank. The third bank is going in the next three months. And we have started paying the fourth. We started paying this month. Did I put pressure on you? We paid all. There will be nothing left. You were told before. You'll be dedicated debt free. When someone said he's swimming dead, where's your own swimming pool? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 6, 13 to 15. Then Abraham patiently. And dear, you don't know the concrete. Have you, have you built a building before? You know when they say concrete has cured. When you are pouring it, it's very watery. You can put your foot in it and it will stain everything. But leave it after a few days. It's set. And you can build a super structure on it because it's set. So when he got patience, God began to pour another thing into that patience called endurance so that it will become solid. No matter what God says, he say, I believe. Hebrews 6, 13 to 15. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. You know what this means? God Almighty himself knows that it takes an oath for you to believe your brother. That's why they go to the court to swear an oath. He knows us all. But when he looked all over heaven, there was no one greater than him. So he looked at the earth, there was no one greater than him. He looked under the earth, there was no one greater than him. and said, Abraham, if you would take it, here I am by myself. A vice one. Saying, surely blessing I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply you. And so, after he had patiently endured. If he's only patience, he may not walk over. It's like putting cement down and mixing it with sand, but not putting water. It will, it will not become concrete. Oh. 
Not putting gravel. So God looked for what will make the faith not to fail. So he put faith there and he now poured endurance there. When you're dealing with God is faith, but when you're dealing with an impossible situation is endurance. When you're dealing with difficult people, hard to please is long suffering. You will suffer long if you marry wrong. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Now, why did he patiently endure? And why did he obtain the promise? It was because in the course of his training, he knew God for who he is. Can two work together except they agree? If when God told me the three things I told her about this building, if I didn't follow through, it would still be Bialanti today. And guess what? It would be almost impossible to start it now. Hebrews chapter 10. Do you know who God is? Do you know who the Almighty is? Kunle, uh, my brother, if I tell you, I'll give you $10,000, will you doubt me? Why will you not doubt me? Huh? You know? Oh, Kunle, uh, do this and do that. All the days that I've been sending you, did I send money to you? I said, do it, do it, do it, I'll pay. Have I failed? Has God failed you? He took Abraham by the hand, showed him the stars. I created them. I'm bigger than the stars. One of them is bigger than your planet. If I let you have a baby now, you will think it was pleasure with my wife. So I want your wife to confess, can my husband still have pleasure? Because her even wife knows engine has knocked. I might be no amen. But she can't like that to engine, she might knock. And what the brother to sister and only him by level my face, right? Kuburu, Jago, Jago. I can't remember who me. Yeah, I call, yeah, I call Decima. You know what direction you can make him move by you. Uh-huh. She might debate whether you like it or not. Any Yawoma, would you long combo gene or long bomber any suru? I joke with Jack. A bammy was a Gilatin Quim got a thing war. Ah, a bonny key, a head. A bonny key. A bammy moy, a bonny key. One day my mother sat down. And her legs were heavy. She was very tired. He said, Esa yin dami lamu. And I got to him and said, Mama, and he let desa lamu. You walk to Lagos from Abelkuta three times. You don't know that. We must go. Both him are two. You better conserve your energy for the last race. In you, oh God that is faithful who has promised and he will perform it. Remember Gabriel said to Mary? No, it wasn't Gabriel. Oh, he said so, yes, but um, 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 what was the name of the sister, cousin of Mary? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Elizabeth said, there shall be a performance of every word that has proceeded from the mouth of the Lord. It's not just bar it's just not bank guarantee, it's performance bond. Mm -hmm. He puts his name behind it. I said it, that settles it. Hebrews 10, 17 to 19, and the cause of his training, he knew God for who he is. Sorry, it's Hebrews 11, not 10. Hebrews 11, 17 to 19. I want to show you why he went to Mount Moriah to go and offer 
the seed and the son of promise as a burnt offering. By faith, when Abraham, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up who? Isaac. I told you in the course of this meeting that Sarah was not there. Sarah was living in Hebron. He was now, he has relocated to Bathsheba. He went from Bathsheba to the place. Are you listening to me? Uh -huh. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it said, in Isaac your seed shall be called. He's leaving you with the argument, a case for argument to say, Lord, you, you can't do this. Lord, this is beyond you. You said this would be my heir. And, and, and now you're asking me to offer him. This is not like you. You would try to argue. But he concluded that God was able to raise him up. Even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. He concluded before going. If he said I should kill him, he has resurrection power. Do you know God that way? Today, according to the word of the Lord, the people in the world, including those in the church, are classified into two types of seed. Can I repeat myself? Today in the world, whether in the first world or third world, you live in the first world, not so. You live in the first world. We live in the third. So when you make phone calls to heaven, it's a long distance call. It's from first to third heaven. When we make a phone call to heaven, it's a local call. It's third to third. Do you understand me? <laughs> local call. That's why, what's the name of the woman that was praying for uh, the, the, the former president of America? What do you call her name? Calling, calling for angels from Africa. Oh my angel, America, Paula White. He said, We now call for angels from Africa. African angels come. <laughs> it's local call here. <laughs> Before you call, I will answer why you are here speaking. I will hear. All right. Okay. And the world today. Including the church, there are only two types of seed in the entire planet, including those who gather every Sunday. Two types of seed. Are you hearing me? Yes. I will ask you this question during lunch. Not you, Stephanie. The accumulators behind you. I will ask you, okay. How many types of seed? You are either... Abraham's seed or Satan's seed? No two ways, nothing in between. How many types of seed? I don't want to compound your matter because you can be Rebecca and carry the tree in your womb, Esau and Jacob. You can be Eve and carry the two in your womb, Cain and Abel. Are you listening? How many types of seed are in the world? Two. What are they? Abraham's seed and? Okay. John chapter 8. I want you to read 37. John 8, 37. I want you to look at the heading. What does it say? The heading of John 8, 37. Abraham's seed and Satan. Abraham's seed and Satan. Who is speaking here? Jesus. I know that you are Abraham's descendant, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I've seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. Listen to them. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you are Abraham's children, you develop faith, you develop 
patience, you develop endurance to receive the promise. If you are Abraham's children, you will do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Go to John chapter 5. I don't have time to show you. He said, I am my father, I won. They wanted to stone him. He said, you are making yourself equal with God because he said he's your father. Now they are saying the same thing. I'm a labusi. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God. For I have come, now have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You have your father, the devil. You brood of vipers who have asked you to come. You have your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. A gentleman came to my house last Sunday in the evening and uh, he was talking about a, a famous politician in, in a, in a, in a, somewhere in this country. I said, the man tells a lie too much. He said, no, he has never told a lie. He's a lie. <laughs> so when he's talking, he doesn't even know whether it's true or lie because himself is a lie. Everything about him, a lie. You have your father, the devil. He is a murderer from the beginning. When he speaks, he speaks of his own. He is a liar and the father of all lies. That's why I taught my children, if they put a gun on your head, you either don't speak, but when you speak, let it be the truth. Because the moment you start telling lie, you identify the seed that's in you. You have your father, the devil. And many of you lie. You remember the little child in the Sunday school? The teacher said, what's a lie? He said, I, ma. He said, what's a lie? He said, sometimes abomination to God, other times a present help in time of need. <laughs> because you lie to those who want to hold you in high esteem, I would rather not talk. And you say, I'm not talking. What can you do? And when I open my mouth, it must be the truth. At the end of the day, at the end of the training, Abraham obtained a testimony. God shook his hand and said, congratulations, Abraham. Done deal. He has your certificate. What is that certificate? Redemption. Abraham, you are now redeemed. Ah, huh? Senate president, Abraham was redeemed. Huh? You are just hearing it now. What church did you attend before you came here? Baptist. Baptist. Uh, it is in the Baptist church. They said, uh, drinking is not sin. As long as you don't drink too much. Ephesians 5. Do not be filled with wine. We are in it is excess or dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. When next you get to a store where they are selling liquor, look at the label. What do they put there? Spirit. Can two spirits live in a human body? Abi. <laughs> I will never forget. I remember the deacon that was preaching. It was a Yaba Baptist church. You want me to mention the name? Deacon. Deacon. The name of the deacon is Shagowawa. I always wonder, why is it still Shagowawa? 
But that's their family name. He was preaching a powerful message that day. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They will take off something. Ah, Oloma, Oma, hypocrisy, believer, Oma, exposed. They shall take off serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, they will not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Somebody praise the Lord. A small lizard now cross all the dickens fell. It was a lizard. I'm not joking. I saw it in my eyes. A lizard just yeah, 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 yeah. So they thought it was something. Those are the people that will take off something. <laughs> What time is it? What time is it? It is time to take over. How are you going to take over? There are wars to fight. There are giants to kill. There are cities to take. We are God's warriors. We are giant killers. We are city takers. But hear me today. Except you are the redeemed of the Lord, you can take no city. That's why 32,000 people followed Gideon. It was a mega, mega church. And God said, I can give this city to these people. No, 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 no. Reduce it further. And reduce it further. Let those who lap water from 32,000, God reduce it to 300. That's a problem we need in the church today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that we don't confuse the crowd with the church. Do you understand me? Those whose hearts are circumcised, those who are prone, those who are redeemed, they are the ones that will take the city. It was our 300 that took the city, not the 32,000 that went back home. Was Abraham redeemed? Isaiah 29. Don't take my word for it. Apostle, don't take my word for it. This is the final testimony I got. He was redeemed. Isaiah 29 verse 22. Therefore, thou says the Lord who? I can't hear you. Therefore, thou says the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. So God redeemed him for the sake of the house of Jacob, who is in the third generation, that nothing will go wrong until Jacob also becomes redeemed. Oh, you're not getting it. Did Jacob become redeemed? Oh, Lord, help me. I need to show you I know the scripture in my spirit. I'm looking for it here if I wrote it down. When Joseph brought his two sons, his eyes were dim. And he said, I do not even think I will see you. Now I'm seeing your sons. And he began to bless them. And he said, the angel who redeemed me. He was referring to God. God who took me out of my father's house. The angel that redeemed me. Check it in your Bible. You see there, was David, you have found it, what is it? 4816. Give me 4816, because I want to round off. I can't even get to David today, I'll try. Before I get to the apostles, I thought, this is one day's message. I think we are going to change our menu in this church. You understand me? We'll come and we'll finish when we finish. Can I hear amen? amen? Because we are missing, I'll soon be taken away from you. You look for me that day, you won't find me, and I will not come. And there will be no, go slow. What do you call that thing? Slow motion. No, not slow motion. What's it? No. Live stream. Uh -huh. Technology. Uh -huh. It's more than live stream now. What? Technology will see you. You will see me. Where? From there. Okay. <laughs> do you know where I'm going? Yes. Can you get there? I'll be with you. Okay. You'll be with me. You leave your wife at home. Ajoba, Adadeo. Ajoba, Adadeo. Enise Bagbo, Enise Leia. Ajoba, Adadeo. Give me verse 15 so that you know he's referring to God who wrestled him down in order to redeem him. 
And he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers, Abraham and Isaac work, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, who is feeding you. The angel who has redeemed me from all evil. Bless the lads. Let my name be named upon them and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac. And let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. He was transferring what he received from Isaac unto the sons of Joseph. Are you with me? How about David? Oh, David's situation. Kai, 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 kai. Maybe I should leave David. Can I rush David for you? I have a few minutes. So that it would just be the apostles, okay? Yes, I'm taking you somewhere where you have dominion over sin. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do you understand me? Do you? Yes, sir. Good. Let's consider David a little bit. David, the son of Jesse, the sweet psalmist of Israel, the shepherd boy who became a king. Huh? Let's examine the training in righteousness that he received. Will you consider David a righteous man? At a very young age, in his teenage years, he was a giant killer. A valiant soldier without joining the army. His three brothers joined the army. He was not part of it, but he was a valiant soldier. He was tested. He was rugged. He was a selfless and sacrificial leader who was ready to lay down his life for his flock and snatch his flock from the paws of the lion and from the paws of the bear. Let's see his credential for Samuel 16. You are going to read his CV. Not from Metropolitan College or from Cambridge or Oxford. God gave this to him. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. May God not send you a troubling spirit because he said it's from the Lord. If you don't know certain things can go from the presence of the Lord, go read the story of Micaiah, the son of Imlah. He said, I saw a spirit that got up and said, I'll become a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. The sinner prophet slapped him. Bah! When did the spirit of God leave me to come to you? He said, you will see in those days when is your king goes to war and does not return. So go keep him in the, in the cell and give him bread of affliction and water of affliction. He said, you think I came here ill prepared? If you return, God has not sent me. Our passenger's administration sees my passport. March 2nd, they returned it to me April 10th. They were going to charge me with reasonable felony. They locked me up in the cell for 16 hours interrogating me. And this idiot said he has no experience. I had no experience when I was fighting for your freedom, for your liberty, fighting against oppression. The woman who was attending was the head, Mrs. Sulik. I think you were there when they first arrested me at the Kedja airport. The man who was in charge of the airport, Nedas, Baba, Egba, Darfa, Katuma, Hano, Emi, Ofe, Arrest, you want to be in the airport, you don't know. I said, no, Ibu, shall before you, let's go. They were driving like crazy. We got there, the interrogation started, and they gave me a form to fill. Name? I wrote my name. Bola, huh? Baba, Tunde, Bakari. They said, put pastor. I said, it's not part of my name. It's what I do. <laughs> They say religion? I said, none. How many properties? Private citizen. How many children? Private citizen. The woman said, you are not cooperating with us. I said, well, what am I? He said, passport number is in your hand. <laughs> At about 11 or so p.m., I've been there since morning. The woman said, we've tried everything to really serve you because we consider you a man of God, but you are not cooperating. I'm going to sleep. One day I will call her to come and testify here. I said, woman, if you sleep tonight, God has not sent me. I think she tried to go home and sleep by 3 a.m. I don't know who she called it. 
And then they pointed to Ika and said, I don't know if there's a parcel bomb there. This is the guy I prefer. So they went to look for the key. Pram, I turned my phone on, Pastor Ike, remember? And I was calling you, running commentary. We are now on Third Mainland Bridge. We are about to go down. <laughs> I ran commentary till we got to the church. Then they found you praying. They said, what is this? I said, your whole village will be swept off by tomorrow if you have not released me. Good night. God bless you. They said, take us to your home. I said, you don't know my house. This is where I live. <laughs> Let's check his CV. May the spirit of the Lord not depart from you. May torment his spirit not destroy you. In the name of Jesus, the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous. So that the righteous will not put their hands into iniquity. Every tormenting spirit, I come against you in the name of Jesus. By the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus is against you. Lose your grief and lose your hold upon the people of God. Let my people go in the name of Jesus. Verse 15. And Saul's servant said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Accurate diagnosis. Let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp. And it shall be that he will play with his hand when the distressing spirit from God is upon you and you shall be well. When God wants to introduce you to higher places, he will give you a skill that will land you there. Do you understand me? See a dying man diligent in his duties, he will not stand before me, amen. He will stand before kings. When God wants to catapult you into power, it does not take him censors or consensors. <laughs> so Saul said to his servants, Provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. Then one of the servants answered and said, Look, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful. In playing, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person. Above all, and the Lord is with him. May they testify about you that the Lord is with you. When you open your mouth to judge, may you constantly be conscious of his presence. When you... Open your shop to sell. May you be constantly conscious of his presence. The presence of the Lord makes a difference. Commands the miraculous. Therefore, so sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David who is with sheep. The sheep. And Jesse took a donkey. Loaded with bread. A skin of wine. And a young goat. And sent them by his son David to Saul. What is, the, what is the meaning of this? Was the king angry or hungry? The king did not have bread. He did not have wine. He could not afford a goat. Have you ever had deja vu before? When God wants to change out your brain. He inspired Jesse to send those things so that Saul could remember when he first had encounter with him. Samuel said, as you go, three men will meet you. One will be carrying three loaves of bread. One will be carrying a jar of wine. And one will carry three kids of gold, representing the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. He said, they will not give you any of the goods because you are stubborn until they change your heart. And they will not drop any wine. It's not the time of outpouring yet. But they give you two loaves of bread to represent healing and that the defense of your enemy is departed from them. The third bread cannot be broken. Why? Because it's the bread of life. He will have to break it himself. So David came to Saul and stood before him. And he loved him greatly. And he became his armor bearer. Then Saul sent to Jesse saying, Me o ta wa mami da da. Me o la ma to le dro ti mi. Ah mami o bossi. Ah ma la ma ni me afi pa mo. Then Saul sent to Jesus, saying, Please let David stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. And so it was whenever the Spirit from God was upon Saul, ah, Spirit Buruku, then David would take a harp and play it with his hand. Then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. That's why you don't listen to every music. 
Because if the person singing it is demon possessed, he's sending demons to you. Do you understand me? Rock and roll generation. Your name is on the roll. You are standing on the rock. And you are, you are taking something that is making Orihikuma yi biri biri, biri biri, biri biri. That's not music that will help you. It will destroy you. Can I go home? It appears I've said too much for today. Huh? You want more? Okay. 1 Samuel 17, 33, 37. That's part of his CV. Uh-huh. Then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. You are not able. How many people have told you your dream will not come to pass? How many people have told you you are wasting your time? You, I size you up from head to toe. You are not able. For you are youth. And he, a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from his mouth. When it arose against me, I cut it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, The Lord will deliver me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. He will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Shall I stop here and say to you this evening, Go, or this afternoon, go, and the Lord be with you. I said, go, and the Lord be with you. Go, and the Lord bless you. Go, and the Lord perfect all that concern you. Go, and make a difference in this world. Go, and the Lord be with you. That's a powerful prayer. Because if God goes with you, nothing can go against you. No one can militate against you. Go and the Lord go with you. Go and the Lord bless you. Go and the Lord perfect all that concern you. Go and the Lord make a difference in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Sit down. I'm closing there as I promised. But take this away with you. With all these formidable credentials. David's struggle and rough times started when his mentor became his tormentor. I will key in from there next time we meet. And I will let you see that none of those challenges were without God's permission. It was after the flesh of David. David was already circumcised in his foreskin. So he could identify a Philistine and said, this uncircumcised Philistine. But David has not been circumcised where it matters. The circumcision of the heart. There's a foreskin of the heart that no doctor, no surgeon can fix. Only God Almighty can circumcise your heart. And until that circumcision takes place, stop singing, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He had redeemed Jack. God will arrange the classes you will attend all by himself in order to kill flesh so that the spirit can rise. Say with me, I'm crucified crucified. with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, it is Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I will not frustrate the grace of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go! And the Lord be with you. Amen. Thank you for listening. God bless you.